Greetings everyone and thank you for joining us for this week's edition of GTV. I'm Don Valiant and this is the news from Kyungi Province this week. In Kyungi Province, a special crackdown on illegal activities in restricted development areas is underway. Running until July 5th, the subjects of the crackdown include unlicensed businesses such as restaurants that emerge in restricted development areas during the summer holiday season. Every summer, a large number of temporary guest houses and restaurants appear in the vicinity of popular resorts without proper provisions for hygiene or safety management. Designating the period until July 5th for a special crackdown, Kyungi Province announced its plans to eradicate such activities in 21 cities and counties of the province. Investigations will focus on construction without permits, as well as illegal building alterations and land usage. This crackdown will be performed by teams of provincial and local officials. Identified violators will be subject to correction orders, charges and penalties as necessary. Kyungi Province recently introduced a free tour vehicle service exclusively for individuals with disabilities. Available to any disabled individual free of charge upon reservation, these vehicles can also accommodate passengers in wheelchairs. On a day for a picnic, the users of this disabled welfare support center are getting on a tour bus that enables passengers to board while in their wheelchairs. Complete with an automatic lift and safety belts for passengers in wheelchairs, this tour bus, also known as the Kyungi Nurim bus, features eight seats for wheelchairs and 21 ordinary seats. Specially designed for passenger groups with disabilities, this fleet of vehicles also includes a five-passenger van for families. The tour vehicle service for the disabled began on June 10th. Destinations are limited to within the province and reservations are required at least two months in advance. Kyungi Province will improve and expand this free tour vehicle service for the disabled in line with user feedback. On June 11th, Kyungi Province announced four strategies to assure an adequate and safe food supply so as to guarantee the basic food rights of residents. These strategies include support for half a million residents who face food shortages and the use of local food for public purposes. According to a 2016 survey, approximately 520,000 residents of Kyungi Province, 3.9% of the provincial population, were experiencing food shortages due to economic reasons. The four strategies were developed to address this issue. They are based on the principle that all have an equal right to food. First, Kyungi Province will provide food items to those facing food shortages while supplying fruit to all child care centers. Second, the province will use local food items for public consumption purposes, including school and military meals. In addition, Kyungi Province will endeavor to reduce the percentage of households that skip breakfast and promote food supplying communities. The province also plans to develop food policy evaluation indices by August and to release annual survey results based on these indices. With African swine fever outbreaks occurring as close as North Korea, South Korea is on full alert to prevent the spread of this viral disease. 
Gyeonggi Province is also moving swiftly to intercept this disease before it enters the province by convening meetings and reinforcing quarantine personnel at seaports and airports. Following outbreaks in Vietnam and China, African swine fever cases were also reported recently in northern regions of North Korea. Four quarantine stations and eight disinfection facilities have been established in Gyeonggi Province, including those in northern provincial regions. Gyeonggi Province Governor Lee Jae-myung asserted that the pathogen must be intercepted before it enters the nation. To do this, the province will request central government permission to dispatch provincial officials to seaports and airports. Gyeonggi Province will also strengthen the control of illegal imports of processed meat products. To this end, the province will consider utilizing volunteers and introducing rewards of up to 200 million Korean won. From this month, a 24-hour disease reporting and control system began operation. To date, all blood tests for animals in border areas have been negative for the disease. Recently, Gyeonggi Province secured the agreement of the cities of Seoul and Incheon to change the name of the Seoul Beltway to the Capital Region Beltway. The province now plans to officially propose this renaming to the central government. The Korean name for the Seoul Beltway translates as Seoul Suburb Circular Expressway. Running a total distance of 128 kilometers through Seoul, Gyeonggi Province and Incheon, this four-lane expressway runs in both directions. However, its Korean name signifies that Gyeonggi and Incheon are suburbs of Seoul. According to related laws, the renaming of expressways requires the agreement of all jurisdictional local governments and an application by two or more of these governments. Gyeonggi Province has been pursuing the renaming of the Seoul Beltway as the Capital Region Beltway. Recently, Gyeonggi was able to secure the agreement of Seoul, the last remaining jurisdictional government, for the renaming of the Seoul Beltway. Meanwhile, the Gyeonggi Provincial Assembly and the 13 related local assemblies adopted a joint resolution seeking this renaming. With all jurisdictional governments having agreed on the renaming of the Seoul Beltway, Gyeonggi Province plans to file an official renaming proposal with the Ministry of Land, Infrastructure and Transport this week. On June 11th, the Gyeonggi Provincial Assembly opened its 336th regular session. Running for 15 days, this session will see the review of 47 items. In his opening address, Gyeonggi Provincial Assembly Chairperson Song Han Jun urged the amendment of the Local Government Act. The 47 items to be reviewed during this regular session include a partial amendment draft for the organization and personnel limits of the Gyeonggi Provincial Administration. This amendment pertains to the reorganization of the administration from 22 offices and bureaus to 25 offices and bureaus. These include the new Fairness Bureau, Labor Bureau, Health Bureau, Future Growth Policy Bureau, and Urban Policy Bureau. These items also include an ordinance draft for the designation of April 16th, the day of the Sewol Ferry disaster, as Respect for Life Day, as well as other days pertaining to water resort safety, air quality management, and the general safety of residents. The opening day also saw five-minute addresses by assembly members. Assembly members 
더불어 지역 경제를 살리고 사회적 가치를 실현하며 문화예술을 꽃피우는 공간으로 다산실학연구원을 통해 실학을 집대성하고 인본주의와 실사구시 등 다산의 위대한 정신을 연구 계승 발전시켜 경기도민의 자긍심 고취를 위한 경기도 차원의 행정적 재정적 지원을 해야 할 것입니다. The 336th Gyeonggi Provincial Assembly regular session will end with the second general meeting on June 25th. Recently, the Gyeonggi Province Special Judicial Police uncovered a dried fruit company that sold illegally produced items valued at 10 billion Korean won. The offenses include false indication of expiration dates and excessive use of aneronia berries in blueberry products. Last November, Gyeonggi Province's Special Judicial Police inspectors received a report regarding these potential offenses. During an investigation undertaken with a search and seizure warrant, inspectors found that this company has used blueberries past expiration dates, fake lactobacillus coatings, and indicated expiration dates extended for as long as one year. It even falsely represented the portion of cheaper aneronia berries in blueberry products as 50%, but actually used much more. During the past 33 years, this company has been producing illicit dried fruit products. Over the past three years, it has sold 623 tons of such products via TV shopping channels. In terms of value, these products amount to 10.3 billion Korean won. Using falsified material feed and production records, this company has been able to gain excessive profits and evade the eyes of inspectors. Handphone을 압수하고 각종 장부를 전부 압수를 해서 저희가 찾아낸 겁니다. 수입식품 검사소에 제출한 유통기한과 그들이 조작한 생산일지 원료 수불부 유통기한을 비교 분석하면 답이 나오는 거죠. This company was sent to prosecution for food and hygiene law violations and referred to the local government for administrative punishment. Thank you for joining us for this week's edition of GTV. We look forward to seeing you again next week.